If your Chrysler, Dodge, or Volkswagen minivan DVD player is getting a read error and won't play DVDs, this video will show you multiple ways to fix it. If you're able to get your hands on one, I'd recommend using one of those DVD slash CD player cleaning discs and see if that fixes it. But if that doesn't work, it's time to remove your DVD player so we can repair it. I'm going to start removing three Phillips screws, one here, one down here, and one back here in the back. Moving to the other side, there's three more to remove. If you have one that's difficult coming out, one thing you can do is kind of get a screwdriver behind it. and kind of lift up on it until it starts wanting to come and then you can get it by hand after that I think this just pulls out there we go there we go there's two uh, plastic clips to pull this out This does not have to be fully uh, removed. So I'm just gonna kind of sit it there like that. Once we have this pulled back, it's revealed a couple screws here that are gonna be important to us. Uh, we're gonna remove the outside ones. There's one. And there's two. Now, up right up here underneath this navigation is a couple of tabs this car is already looks like it's missing one of them there's another one over here that we need to pull back and down and you you don't want to be rough on these or else uh, you'll pull them off like the previous person who worked on this car Two more screws that we can now remove. This can lift up. If you're stuck, you just kind of pull on it because what you're doing is you're removing it from these clips. Now, we don't need to take it all the way out. All we need to do is get to this screw and that screw right there. So, Let's go ahead and remove these. Once those screws are removed, we can pull out this whole front piece. And I'm just gonna kinda sit it over to the side. And now I'm to my DVD player. Wrong screwdriver. So I'm gonna remove a screw on this side and then the same screw on the opposite side. Now, this will slide out, and there's just one plug to remove in the very back. And let's see if I can get this to where you can see. And so I just squeeze this clip and pull back, and pull, and we're out. And the DVD player is removed. Now let's bring it inside and begin disassembling. We'll start by removing the three screws on top of the player. The lid should now pull up. There will be two screws on each side of the DVD player's face that we'll want to remove next. Using a flathead screwdriver, we need to pop the faceplate off of its tabs on each side. So what I'm going to do is gently pry all the tabs <laughs> off on one side. Once I feel comfortable that they're off, I'll flip the unit over and pry them off on the back side. And that will allow the entire faceplate to come off.
Now there are four screws across the front of the player that we'll need to remove. Once those are out, we'll be able to pull this entire player out of its box. And there's just two ribbons now that we'll need to remove. To do this, there's these little tiny white tabs on each side of the ribbon that you pull back. And that releases it. So once those are pulled back, you'll be able to pull the ribbons out. I should also mention right now that as we're doing this, you'll want to inspect every item to make sure that you don't see anything with problems. So one common problem with these is that they have a cut ribbon. So if you see any slices in your ribbon, replace it. Now there's two more screws that we'll need to remove. This one right here, top center, and another one that's slightly recessed here toward the side. Once both of those are removed, it takes a little bit of finger strength, but you'll pry that little plate off. We need to get this circuit board out of our way. So there's two screws to remove from that. And then we'll need to dis disconnect uh, this ribbon right here. To remove this circuit board now, you actually have to pry it kind of forward and off of these tabs. So there's one on each side. I'm now working on the second one and it's a little bit tricky but you just pry it forward and please uh, ignore the ninja in the background <laughs> I don't remember if it's necessary to remove this little black piece or not but I did so it doesn't hurt You'll want to move the laser portion of the uh, assembly toward the center of its track. The laser is actually what's in my hands right now. And so as you can see, it's kind of a, toward the middle. And the reason for that is there's a notch on the other side that my hands are covering right now that once you fit it into the notch and you can kind of pry on it, you'll be able to rotate it up like I just did. There's the notch right there. That's it right there. Now we are going to clean this laser by hand, which is actually a lot more effective than that cleaning desk was. To do this, we're going to use some rubbing alcohol and some Q-tips. This really ain't much different than cleaning some windows or a glass tabletop. You're just wiping on and then wiping off with uh, the dry side and I like to repeat this a few times just for good measure and then make sure that I don't see any more hairs or anything like that from the q-tip on there once finished we'll just reinsert it back through that notch by flipping it over and then put everything back together the same way that you took it apart if you didn't find anything else obviously wrong inside your player I've found that manually cleaning the laser fixes the problem about four out of every five times. So I recommend just plugging your player in and giving it a test try before making the full install. If by chance you get it together and find the player still has a read error, at this point I'd recommend just jumping on eBay and finding an inexpensive used unit to replace it with. Alright, seems to be working. So as you can see, cleaning the laser fixed mine this time. There we go. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, please help my little family by clicking that subscribe button. We just bought 90 acres that we're hoping to turn into our dream farm. So not only will I be posting videos to show you how to fix almost anything, you'll also get to follow us on the adventure of raising four kids on a dirt road. I appreciate you.